Hi there, and welcome to a short demo on the Metaflow Sandbox. As you can see, I'm currently at outofbounds.com slash docs slash sandbox. So to get started, let's click on this big button that says sign up for a sandbox. Now, we're able to log in or sign up with Google or GitHub. Uh, before doing that, I'd just like to mention that what we're doing here is signing up to test full stack data science with Metaflow for free. So the intention is to have a test drive of the open source framework Metaflow for machine learning and all the tools that it interoperates with, such as Kubernetes clusters uh, or Parquet shards on S3 uh, or Scikit-learn or TensorFlow or whatever your uh, Pythonic packages of choice are. Uh, the intention is not to have this for production use, uh, nor is it a commercial product. The intention is to allow people to play around with uh, the open source framework where we have set up all the infrastructure that allows you to access everything you need as seamlessly as possible. So let's continue with Google. And essentially, what I was speaking to there, before I open the sandbox, I just want to say, what I was speaking to is a data scientist who needs to interact with data all around the place. They need to interact with orchestration. Uh, versioning is a, is a huge concern. Compute, and then starting to think about deployment and production environments. Uh, this can be uh, a, a huge task to set up all of this and then see how Metaflow works with it. So we've done all the infrastructure set up for you so you can immediately start playing around with Metaflow as we'll see in a second. So you may recognize this uh, if you've used uh, VS Code before. Um, so essentially we have um, a, a souped up version of VS Code with access to all types of machine learning uh, infrastructure that, that you'll need, okay? Um, what we have on the left hand side are a series of lessons. I'm going to take us through a couple of those or a few, but not all of them because I'm sure you're pretty excited to check out some of them yourself. Okay, so I'm going to hit run current flow and then talk you through what's happening. Uh, essentially, uh, what we have here is um, a, a class we've defined. Uh, which uh, specifies the steps in the flow as, as functions and which step leads to which next step. So what we have here, you'll see that we have our start step, our eat step and our end step. Um, and the way we let uh, Metaflow and Python know what the next step is, at the end of each step, we use self.next uh, and pass to it self dot the name of the following step. So uh, to the start step, we pass to self.next, self.eat. And that defines the order of operations here a very brief in, in introduction um, to uh, Metaflow. Now, there are lots of interesting lessons here that include artifacts and versioning, parallel processing and monitoring. On the artifacts and versioning, uh, I'll merely state that you may have seen um, here when we ran, ran the code uh, that we have timestamps and, and IDs and that type of stuff. All of this allows us to uh, access our models and runs and code and data uh, after the fact. Um, so it versions absolutely everything. Let's jump to scaling out to the cloud um, and I'm going to hit run and then we're going to start talking about what's, what's happening here. So I think what's very important for me to talk through uh, is that we have this process step, right? Which you could imagine is, you know, um, large scale training, a, a particular model, a step that we might want to send uh, to a cloud instance. And we don't have to edit any code in order to do that except adding the at Kubernetes decorator to the step in question. Uh, and it sends it immediately to the Kubernetes cluster that in this case we've provisioned for you. Um, but perhaps your platform infrastructure engineer would have provisioned for you uh, at, at, at your place of work, right? Um, this is very exciting for me. I'm excited that uh, Metaflow allows scientists to um, uh, leverage cloud compute without having to you know, configure their own YAMLs and JSON and all of these, th these types of things, right? And to tighten the loop um, uh, the cycle in the iterative loop between prototype and, and production. On top of that, I'll mention that you'll see that the step after the start step is the process step, but we're passing this for each quag to it and passing a list to that, right? Essentially what this does is this will parallelize across the three uh, elements of, of, of the list. Um, and you can imagine that when you want to train a bunch of different models, this would be incredibly useful to be able to train them in parallel. And that's exactly what we see here. We're parallelizing across these three and then we're joining them at the end. Okay. Um, 
So as a final example, um, I, we haven't really given any quote unquote machine learning, like modeling examples yet. Um, in the names of pedagogy, we decided to keep it simpler up until this point, but I'd like to do that now. Uh, I'm gonna hit run current flow. And then I wanna tell you uh, one thing, kind of how we think about things. At, at, at Metaflow, we want data scientists to be able to focus on the top parts of the stack, such as modeling, feature engineering, all of these types of things that they love to do and that they're trained to do and that essentially they're paid to do while having access to all the bottom uh, layers of the stack, such as data and compute, to name, to name two. Now, to be very explicit, our intention has never been and is not to replace infrastructural platform engineers, uh, but essentially to build tools and workflows uh, and ways of working together that allow data scientists and infrastructure engineers to work together as seamlessly as possible and to generate as much value for their organizations as possible. So just to say a little bit about what we're doing here, um, the task, it's a regression task, it's the New York City taxi data set and we're trying to predict uh, the price, the fare of um, every ride using features such as uh, time, year, um, hour, day of the week, and thinking about the distance of the ride and where the pickup longitude and drop off longitude, which are reasonable features. I'll also quickly say that I'm excited that part of this story here is we see we're actually freezing dependencies outside the flow um, in order to make sure that our work is reproducible. Uh, on top of that, you're able to uh, specify step level dependencies as well, which is, which is pretty cool. Now, I also wanna show you this Metaflow UI. So I'm gonna take this UI here and Paste it there. And what we'll see in real time is what is executing. So we had our start step, modeling, evaluate. Now we're creating the report. Uh, so this should end soon. I, what I wanna be very clear about is that this UI is open source, so you can jump in and play around with it to your heart's content and do whatever you'd like with it. Um, and in fact, what we'll see is that we're able to create custom reports, um, including visualizations and artifacts and whatever it is that is it super important to you. Once again, we are not opinionated about how you build your reports, just as we're not opinionated about what packages you use, whether it's scikit-learn, pandas, TensorFlow, PyTorch, FastAI. We're not opinionated about your use cases, whether it's NLP, computer vision, operations research. We wanna enable you to do as much uh, and as broad a, a scope of machine learning as, as possible. Um, so this code has finished. Now I'm gonna open the run uh, in the Metaflow GUI, and this will take us directly to the custom visualization we built, um, which in this case, uh, we had a random forest model and a baseline, and we wanted to plot uh, predicted fare against the actual fare to see how our model performed. A um, Couple of things, I mean, look at these, these vertical lines. This is interesting. This then tells us maybe there are certain parts of our model and our, um, even our data that we, that we need to interrogate. Um, so immediately we see how important this type of visualization is. But once again, whatever types of visualizations you need to build, you're able to um, in the Metaflow GUI, which itself is open source. Um, in terms of what's next, if, um, if you're interested in chatting with us about how you use um, our Metaflow Sandbox, please join us on Slack. You can uh, find it here at slack.outofbounds.co. Um, but I hope you had fun uh, watching this short demo. I sure had a lot of fun making it. Uh, and I hope you have even more fun with the projects that you uh, test in it and what you check out and can't wait to hear from you uh, on our Metaflow Slack. Thank you.